So starting with the first one, Indra rules the east direction. Now about Indra, there are three, four things that you need to understand. Indra is the God, king of gods. Indra is the king of gods. So Indra indicates what? Power which is already attained. He's already the king of the God. He don't have to become. So when a planet goes to the Indra division, zero degree to three degree in the male Rashi and uh, 27 degree to 30 degree in the female Rashi, Indra division. When a planet go to Indra division, they do not have to struggle for power. They already have the power. Generally indicates that you are inheriting a business from your father or someone in the family. Name, fame, status, you are already having. Like being the son of Ammani, you know. You already have a level of name, fame, status. You will go on markets, ask for people for investment. They will not ask your credentials. Because you are a big shot kind of a personality, right? Now see how much it is against the fact that planet in zero degree is weak. Planet in zero degree or planet in 29 degree will be ruled by Indra. That is very powerful. Indra gives you power. So about in the few things you understand, in is the king of the gods, it indicates a kingly status. Right? It indicates a kingly status where, where you have a lot of name, fame, prestige, and power. And you can exercise it on people. It generally indicates a profession where your power or your contacts with people you are using. Right? And because Indra is already the king, it also indicates inheriting a lot of things, inheriting a lot of power, a lot of property and multiple things. Right? Indra indicates that. But there, is, there are two problems with Indra. Indra, despite being the king of the gods, he have no qualities of a king. And he looks like more like a commoner who is very much engrossed. See, who is a king? Atma is the king of the body. And because of this particular reason, Atma does not enjoy anything that the body enjoys because Atma already owns all of it. This is the quality of king. Getting my point? But in the behavior of Indra is very much opposite the king. Indra is much into damsels and enjoyments and all these things. So, you know, the approach is taken that if there is a king and even if the king, you know, king is like father, king is like Brahma. So he cannot lure over the beauty of the landscape that he owns. Right? So Raja ke paas kya hota hai? Ki Raja hai, Raja ko bhoat achcha sukh suvidha hoti hai. To dousri kisi choti sukh suvidha ke liye compromise nahi karata, achcha Raja. Jho fakir hota hai, woh toh this is the basic approach. But Indra is very much unlikely the position. So Indra also indicates someone getting power which they do not deserve. And because of this non-deserving, there will be issues because of that. Because you are not deserving that, you will have to work hard. You know, it is a very different thing. You work hard to achieve a status, then you enjoy that status is a simple way. You inherit a status and then slowly, slowly you have to work to become capable to enjoy the status. Will essentially indicate that in the starting you will make mistakes and in the starting you will not meet up the expectations of people. Right? This comes within the the third most important thing is any Rishi starts doing tapasya, Indra is very disturbed of that. So he will send an apsara to, you know, put, put some disturbance in the tapasya, in the, what, what tapasya is called, in the penance that the Rishi is doing. He will generally do that. Any demon will come and he will attack him at any point of time. And generally because Indra is an enjoying king, Indra is a king who does not, you know, who does not deserve to be a king, but somehow by fate have became the king. So he keeps on running. 
there is no demon whom indra have killed all by himself sometime he will go to the dichi to ask for boon sometime he will go to vishnu sometime he will go to shiva sometime he will go to devi sometime he will go to brihaspati khud usse kuch nahi hota jata tha so when the planet goes into indra challenges come very disturbing challenges come and you have to take support of people so the tip for indra is always have good relationship with people because you will have to run for them okay now you understand the point if the lagna lord is into indra division enjoyment is your approach and by fortune you have got things which you don't deserve but somehow you got when the 10th lord goes there this happen with respect to profession and for that matter what i think is the shamsha is not limited to only mahatphalam the shamsha mahatphalam only parashar is saying no one else is saying at all so what i believe is that the lord of the divisional chart is the crux and it can be applied for all so when the seventh lord goes into indra division the same condition happens in your family in your marriage you get a spouse who is very beautiful who you don't deserve and then you remain insecure that someone else will come and lure the lady hence living intention so it works with every planet it also happens in dasha and dasha if you are having mercury in the division of indra and the dasha of mercury is going to come first of all you will gain something because of luck and secondarily there will be challenges there will be many competitors who even after the thing coming to you will come and will disturb you will try to snatch the things away from you this will happen right so all the three ways it have to be interpreted whatever you say interpretation should be done accordingly for example this modi ji our modi ji right now is going into the vimeshottari dasha of moon from 2012 to 2022 november he is going into moon dasha you see moon is debilitated but this debilitation does not matter for me i go to d10 to find moon is ruled by ishan ishan i still have to teach you ishan will come into the end but ishan is a form of shiva that indicates blessing so blessings of shiva is there from 2012 to 2022 you know the election from banaras kedarnath kashi vishnuath corridor and all these things have been happening and he has been blessed by shiva right the blessing comes and it is an hypothetical gajgeshri yoga that i will just explain you but the results are this way after moon mars dasha will come from 2022 november to 2029 november and this mars goes to the division of anand endless so a legacy is coming it seems like that anand is endless legacy endless legacy is coming you know the name will be forever in the history can be interpreted multiple ways you know you can also interpret it with a pinch of salt that's fine that i will explain to you and each and each and every one of them but is this very very clear okay then comes the agni the lord of the south east dekho i am telling you two to three three points about all these gods though i can write a complete monologue on these gods but a monologue will not help you right so two three major points you take that's all how much monologue you will remember i have spent five six years reading all the vedas and everything to know that right so little information but precise information is what is my target right now and because remembering all the complete story will make you disturbed now the next one is agni so you understand three four points about these gods agni is the leader of the gods commander in chief of the god is agni leader okay so that's why you know the southeast direction which is ruled by agni in vastu southeast direction you have kitchen 
right because this is where the leadership decisions are made whatever <clears throat> so agni is a leader primarily agni is a leader agni is the commander in chief of the gods army so what type of profession it does indicate it indicates a profession where you have to lead people team managers kind of a department team managers or you know trainers or who train people on how to lead right the seminars and all these things presentations team leaders hr managers they come into this agni department the leadership department those who guide you on on, on how to work what does a commander in chief do the first person to fight in the battle is the soldier and the last one to fight in the battle is the commander in chief commander in chief generally does not fight he prepares the plan here to attack there to attack do this do that so people into planning the ceo cfo ctos and all them they are agni right the leader who goes by the support of people a commander in chief is a commander in chief because everyone in the army have decided to give him the position otherwise it will take a simple one person from the army to kill the commander in chief also right dekho sainik ka gala kaatna bhi utna hi aasan hai jitna aasan senapati ka gala kaatna hai isme kya hai this is very simple but people have chosen this person to rule over them this choice and support of people and the crowd behind you comes with agni and the king have given everything everything that the king does is dependent on this commander in chief you know ministers and everyone else is at a distance even if minister wants to give something to the to the king he will first give it to the commander in chief then commander in chief will give it to the king no one comes close to king except for the commander in chief so very much trusted of someone having an exclusive right to a person or anything as such is indicated by agni are you getting my point i think you are understanding it right this is what the agni does exclusive rights kind of a stuff exclusive right to something along with this so these two things are very important with agni agni is leader agni is commander in chief whom people have chosen to lead he have exclusive rights for many many things he is into planning he is into planning and the execution of this planning but he is not the one who does that right but and you should understand one more point about commander in chiefs commander in chief is not the most powerful one commander in chief is the most clever one i don't know it was napoleon or who but there was a great king the greatest king the world have ever seen who have killed maximum number of people and expanded his territory in the minimum amount of time his height was 5 feet 8 inches yeah, sorry his his height was 4 feet 8 inches not even 5 feet i am talking of 1800 1700s right he was somewhere in europe he is not having a height he was also not very muscular of course if your height is 4 feet 8 inch you cannot fight with a 5 feet 6 inch person very simply but he was the most cruel and the greatest general the world have ever seen because clever right so commander in chief is the one who will take the minimum strokes to kill someone so this cleverness you know giving your minimum and taking the result maximum is what agni indicates right this is also what agni does but there is a problem with agni agni is very frightened so when i was teaching this nakshatra course you know this krutika is ruled by agni so when i was teaching kritika there was a story that you know shiva have to 
Shiva was to produce a child, this Kartikeya, Shiva was to produce it. And Kamadev was there to do whatever he is to do. But the fire of Kama cannot be there until and unless Agni comes into play. So all gods went to find Agni and he started hiding at different places. Sometimes he will hide in the water, sometimes he will hide in the tree, sometimes he will hide on the banana tree. And some person or the other will find that Agni is here and will tell the gods. Agni will curse the person and so the thing is Agni first hid into a tree. Birds told the gods that Agni is hiding in a tree so Agni cursed them that you will have bifurcated tongue from now onwards and you will you will not be able to eat anything because of your tongue. Many Every animal do everything with their tongue. Birds don't. So Agni cursed them and went into water. So as Agni went into water, the turtles told gods that Agni is into water. So Agni cursed the turtle that you will have this and this, whatever the curse, I don't remember. After that, Agni hide into a banana tree. So the banana tree tells it to the gods that Agni is hiding here, the banana tree himself. So Agni curses the banana tree that you will only give fruit once in your life. And then you will be useless, even your stem will not be used. Generally, 80% for the tree's stems are used. So Agni is very frightful. Agni does not want to take responsibility. Generally, Agni is dragged into responsibilities. Or those responsibilities which basically Agni should not take. Why Agni is frightful? Agni is frightful because he knows that I am doing something which is against the dharma. I am doing something which Shiva does not want to happen. And if I do this, I will get punished. So Agni is frightful. Agni is frightful of the repercussions. Agni is frightful of the person in front of him. Agni wants to remain dharmic and Agni does not want to take troubles to him. This is basically what is the approach of Agni. And this becomes the approach of the planet who is situated in Agni. Okay. This point. Now the southern side is ruled by Yama. Now few things about Yama you have to understand. Yama, see Agni is forced to take responsibilities. But he is a commander in chief. He, just a second. Yes, so Agni is still a leader. You know, Agni is still a leader. He is afraid of repercussions. He don't want to do things which hurt people, whatever. Okay. With Yama, this is a grief. It is a grave problem. You should know about the Yama. Yama is a very humble kind of a personality. Two, three things about Yama are there. So what happens? There are multiple stories about it. There is a sister of Yama known by known by the name of Yami. There's another sister by the name of Yamuna also, but they're separate. Yami is the sister from this Sangya. And Yamuna is the sister from Chaya. So Yamuna is more a sister of Saturn and less a sister of the Yama. So Yami wants to have a physical relationship with Yama, which Yama refuses. That I will not have. So Yami curses him that you will die. And because he's the first person to die, he becomes the in charge of death. So basically, he's the boss of the company because he has started the institution. Right? This basically happens with Varani. First of all, the dearth or the need to earn money, the sacrosity to earn money, things such as, you know, taking the family out of financial uh, the financial crunches and all these things, you know, such bad conditions force Yama to take professional decisions. Generally, it indicates own institution. Like Yama is having his own company of death, you know. He's the only in charge with no employees. 
because every employee dies yama is the first one to die right so another thing is accident at, at the workplace or accidents while working is again signified by yama and because of death is specifically death related things or rather uh, rather we should say you have seen this john wick movie so there is a department you know who takes care of the people they have killed so all this type of things you know working with garbage materials you know solving issues created by others taking care of the leftovers and all these things goes to the department of yama the third point is yama is very righteous the only problem with yama is yama is very very right so yama loses his leg because he is righteous and yama have many you know yama have many things because he is simple yama is quite simple minded you know buddhu kind of a person yama is he does not understand what people are doing with him this is major problem with yama that yama is very simple minded i should tell you two story first of all yama is very truthful he finds that this mother is not my real mother she is a shadow and what he does is he directly goes on and tell this he does not tell it privately to son he tell in front of the chaya and kicks the lady why he is so truthful he must have gone to the company into the side and has have talked about it. see if i have to talk something to my wife if it is a personal talk i will do it personally na i will not do it into a public place yama don't understand this non professional behavior or unprofessional behavior this kind of a stuff you know unprofessional non professional behavior is what yama signifies so when your boss tells you that make yourself comfortable in office that does not mean from the next day onwards you start wearing knickers to your office short pants into your office ki boss sir you told me make yourself comfortable to ab main jo hai ki bermuda pehen ke aaunga office yahi idhar baithunga hai na this so this degradation and such things are indicated yes pratul yama with freelancers also you can indicate you can add yama to freelance this is a freelancing work only you know yama get nothing out of it the third thing that you should understand about yama is the story of savitri and satyavan with yama so what is happening yama lives in the southernmost part of the world into a city which is known as samyamini and samyamini yama lives in samyamini means where everyone is equal after the night basically it will mean that so that's okay humble yama is very very humble so what is happening Savitri is a lady, very beautiful, but she is not finding anyone suitable to marry her. She goes into a forest and one day finds Satyavan, who is the son of a king. But that king is cheated by his siblings, so he, the king, the father of Satyavan, with his children and with his wife, is forced to live into the forest. Savitri finds this man very beautiful and decides to marry him. After this deciding, comes to her home to her father. to tell that i am going to marry this person but by that time narad also comes there and narad tells that savitri your choice is very good but the only point is this person is going to die in one year savitri tells does not matter i have decided to marry this person i will marry this person narad we are not listening that is fine savitri marries that person and she starts keeping fast every day so savitri does not eat into the day time she only eats in the night time she does it for one year and post one year when the fateful day comes savitri tells satyavan that i will also come to you to the forest to collect the woods and let's see what will happen i will not let anything happen because i am savitri whatever be the case satyavan while riding on a tree faints falls down dies yama comes and takes satyavan now what the savitri lady is doing is she is following yama yama is going south on on his buffalo and the savitri is just following yama he keeps on following yama tells him three four times that he have died i cannot give him back to you why you are following him your father in law mother in law and everyone is there waiting his father uh, the father of satyavan the father in law of the savitri was also blind so they are waiting why you are following me he pleads yamraj pleads that you stop following me and in the end yamraj tells what you will take to stop following 
Savitri tells me, you give me a boon. She asks the boon that may my father-in-law gets back his kingdom. Yama grants the wish. Yama keeps on going to the south. Savitri still follows her. Then Yama tells, okay, I will give you second wish. Ask. Then she asks for the eye of the father-in-law that may my father-in-law be able to see again. Yama grants that wish also. Keeps on going to the south. Savitri is still following him. So Yama tells me that, okay, I will give you third wish also. So Savitri tells, you give me a wish that I should have 100 children. Now he grants that wish also. And because he have granted the wish for 100 children and she was having no children at all and she was devoted to her husband only, he had to give life of her husband also. See, Yama is very simple. But he's very simple, no? Indra and Agni does not go this way. Agni is trying to burn uh, Agni is trying to burn a forest named Khandwa. People are coming and people are pleading that Agni, you are very cruel. Agni burns the forest, Agni burns the people, including their children. You go to hell. Mere ko jangal jalana hai to jalana. When Indra is there to break a havoc, Indra is like, I don't care. If I want to do this, I will do this. All gods go this way. This is the particular reason Rigveda, Rigveda starts with that, oh gods, don't get angry on us because they're getting angry. But this is only Yama who is not getting angry. He's very simple. He's very humble. This is what happens with Yama. Very simple, very humble. He does not know the ways to, you know, he's not much clever. He can be easily cheated. Generally gets cheated. So this kind of, you know, signing into a wrong paper and getting cheated by people, this also Yama indicates. The next one is Niritti, who rules the Northwest. Probably you don't know Niritti. So let me tell you a point. The concept of Kali the concept of Nritti was replaced by the concept of Kali in the Middle Ages when Pushyamitra Shunga was the ruler, around 1st century AD. The concept of Nritti and the concept of Kali is the same. So when you go to ancient temples, I don't know you have been there or not. There is a specific differentiation of every god. How do you understand that this idol belongs to this god? So, you know, Agni have a long beard. Long conical beard Agni is having. So when you see a long conical beard, it is Agni. Indra never is on foot. Indra is always riding something. So one who is always riding is Indra. Yama, you always know. Yama have a very fearful, you know, very fearful face Yama is having. With red eyes and, you know, a prominent veins. Yama is having very prominent veins. Right? So Yama, you will also, he's also a bit fat. And all gods are wearing, you know, good dresses. When you go to temples like Kujraho, etc., who have been saved from, you know, somehow got saved from the attack from the invaders. You find that all gods are wearing beautiful clothes. You know, it is very detailed, very intricate, very fine, how they are wearing a pearl necklace and everything. You know, Indra loves pearl necklace. He is wearing pearl necklace in, the, in his chest, in his neck, in his hands, at every place he is wearing. Niritti is the only god who is naked. Naked A to Z. Above to below, Niritti is naked in every image and in every photo, Niritti is naked, barefooted, walking on the ground. The concept was later replaced by Kali. So Kali is also once again, remains naked, but whatever be the case. That Niritti is somehow different, Kali is somehow different, but Niritti is the god of Maya. Niritti is the god of illusion. Niritti lures people to die. You say Vinashkale Viprit Buddhi. Vinashkale Niritti Buddhi. So when the bad times come, Niritti comes to your head. And this Niritti tells you to make a mistake. This Niritti forces you 
to make a mistake this niritti takes you into illusions and because of this particular illusion you die or you commit a mistake this is the niritti department what do you understand from it people who are into luring people who lure you to do something to purchase anything or anything as such is indicated by niritti right people who lure you into something salesmanship etc these things also a lots of travel because maya is not fixed maya is always moving the veil of maya is always moving and always increasing so travels related profession niritti indicates you know this uh, this chain marketing adding people in uh, adding people to earn money kind of stuff also indicated by niritti along with this it is only niritti who is almost an invincible god every god will die one day including vishnu and shiva niritti will never die right it will all it all started from niritti it will all end into niritti right so a legacy is indicated by niritti right maya legacy luring people into something is indicated by niritti and when planet goes into niritti it is the high time when you will do mistakes when you will get into a lure so getting into a lure and committing mistakes because of that is indicated by niritti now the next one is varun varun rules the west direction now regarding varun three four things are there i am just telling you the stories only now right understanding you will get yourself is what i believe that because as i have explained you all this four five gods so regarding varun what is happening when rigveda starts varun is a god equally powerful as indra slowly slowly varun starts becoming bad and powerless to such a great extent that by the end of rigveda varun is an evil and a weak god so loss of power someone being portrayed as evil someone being portrayed into a wrong light misfortune and all these things are indicated by varun along with this the basic point is there are two clan of hindus one who worship idols not written in vedas one who strictly go by vedas they are parsis they have a text by the name of ahur majda in that text indra is the villain varun is indra in our text indra is indra varun is the villain so start of a new sect start of something new going against the way of traditions and doing new inventions is what varun is up to but you know what varun who is a vaidhi god by the time of ramayan rama takes the bow out and he starts the ram varun ko dhamka rahe ki vine na manat jaldi jad gayi teen din beet bole ram sakop tab bhay bin hoye na preet so the condition of varun gets deteriorated to a great extent Indra is neither spared in the Govardhan episode of Krishna, where Krishna picks up the Govardhan on his little finger. Indra is again then. Indra is at challenge, basically indicating that the Puranic gods or the Puranic theme is against the Vedic theme somehow. It seems like, but whatever. And so it is almost challenges are coming to Varun as it is coming to Indra. but the thing is indra is someone who is already having power he does not deserve that power but he have already got that varun on the other hand is someone who is banished from the power 
who is thrown from the power who have lost the power he have been very unfortunate and now he have to do that hard work to gain that power again and somehow favors are not time is not favoring but the basic point is all the weapons in the world varun rules them the power into the weapon arun gives sorry varun gives so it is told that to you know this agni got indigestion there was a rishi there was a king who wanted to do tapasya and he was inviting all the rishis to do the tapasya for him but whenever they wanted to light fire it will not burn because of that the king was not able to do the tapasya so what the king instead did he went to himalayas went to shiva and shiva told him you take durvasa with you durvasa will do the havan for you and then you know durvasa so durvasa did a havan for 12 years continuously straight and he gave so much offerings to shiva so much offerings to fire that agni had indigestion agni bloated and because of that indigestion he became very uncomfortable he went to brahma what i will do what i should do brahma told him you are having a lot of indigestion what you do you burn this khandwa a forest named khandwa you burn agni went to burn the khandwa forest but in the khandwa there was living snake a snake which was friend of indra so whenever agni will try to burn it indra will start raining so agni was not able to burn it and in a state he was not able to get out of his constipation he went to brahma again to help him brahma told that you will see nar and narayan coming there you ask them for help later on krishna and arjun comes there and in uh, agni recognizes that this krishna and arjun is the nar and narayan that brahma is talking about so what agni does is agni try to please both of them for for to please agni uh, to please uh, this uh, arjun and krishna agni gives them a lot of gift lot of weapons lot of special type of weapons lot lots of special type of horses etc and after pleasing him ask them for help so what they do arjun tells that i will help you agni starts burning the khandwa khandwa forest indra starts raining and to save the raining to destroy the fire what arjun does arjun shoots one lakh arrow and makes a canopy over the fire so that the water cannot reach and he burns the complete forest now when mahabharat ends everyone is killed agni comes back to arjun that all these weapons all these divine weapons that you are having i have borrowed from the sea god varun and now you have to give it back to him so near this tirupati balaji in tirupati balaji there is a jyotirling by the name of mallika arjun so why it is mallika arjun arjun goes there worship shiva and in the nearby sea throws his weapons so all these weapons all these tools all these inventions which help you live your life from software to refrigerator is the varun department they are all tools hai na storage of things cold storage transportation anything which is achieved which help with the help of machine and science and technology is ruled by varun okay the next is vayu there is one thing very specific the 10 gods that i am talking about also rules some of the nakshatras so at least about 7 8 nakshatras you will know the results as well however nakshatra is not our department so let's leave it regarding vayu who is the lord of the north west direction understand the point that vayu is the most powerful god there is no god more powerful than vayu vayu is the only god who right from the vedic times is perceived in both a negative and a positive way so vayu is marut also marut vayu good vayu 
and along with this vayu is jhanjhavat also vayu is tornado also it is the most powerful god all things which need physical power to be done physical power to you know like things which need physical power building construction operation of heavy machinery whichever needs a physical power to operate any such kind of profession is indicated by vayu and to understand vayu you should understand that hanuman is an incarnation of vayu and so is bhim an incarnation of vayu you know hanuman and bhim hanuman and bhim uses gada mace rama uses arrow bow and arrow what is the difference the difference is between shastra and astra astra rama is having astra astra you can throw like a spear is an astra you can throw shastra you cannot throw you have to hold it and fight like sword and mace right so constant monitoring things which include constant monitoring such as software development website development looking after the security of servers and all these things which indicate constant monitoring is also indicated by vayu things which need power is also indicated by vayu and most importantly vayu is tension free in life the only tension that comes in the life of vayu is because of commitment bhim had to go through a lot of things everyone talks about how abhimanyu was killed no one talks about how ghatotkach was killed the ghatotkach was the son of bhim na he was also killed but no one is having any sympathy towards bhim when everyone was standing silently while draupadi was being harassed it was only bhim who took the pledge then i will do it for you so responsibility specifically note those responsibilities that fall on you the responsibilities that you go forward and take is generally the problem what happens with why and they are generally trusted with a great responsibility like hanuman was trusted with the responsibility of finding sita hanuman took it on himself though the promise was made to sukriv not to hanuman right so the one who takes the biggest responsibility and works it out taking a big responsibility and working it out is what is indicated by vayu are you getting my word and other things you can take out of the story i think it is very simple to decode also and yeah and why you also indicate you know why you is also very fickle kind of stuff so you know insecure jobs or jobs where you don't have security you know, take a kind of stuff commission kind of stuff is also indicated by why specifically a lot of traveling for profession is also indicated by why and you know what when there was this agnyatavas when the pandavas have to get disappeared and serve their time in the forest everyone became something what bhim became bhim became a cook so this cooking and things related to cooking and etc things you know is also indicated by vayu next comes the kuber the lord of the north direction about kuber you should know three four things kuber is outstanding because kuber is the brother of vibhishan ravan and kumbhakar however kuber is the most outstanding one so this is outstanding exceptional ultra talented kind of a person you know everyone is into service he is into business everyone is a common worker he is an ips kind of a stuff best happens with vibhishan who becomes the king of lanka but then he dies also right but kuber on the other hand is living in kailash in the company of shiva 
serving as a guardian of the serving as the guardian of the treasure that is of lakshmi so kuber is the only one who have reached to the highest extent right and because kuber is the guardian of the treasure business dealing with finances and other such things are indicated by kuber exceptional qualities great rise going above the family status you know with your money uplifting the standards of the family is also indicated by kuber not only that the pushpak viman which ravan had later on rama had is also belonging to kuber so things related to vehicle and transportation is also indicated by kuber and kuber is a yaksh yaksh are into dance music acting and all these things that is also indicated by kuber last but not the least the only mistake that kuber does is when kuber reaches kailash he accidentally finds parvati first looking at the beauty of parvati he becomes so enchanted that he wants to marry parvati and with this thought on kailash shiva appears out of somewhere and pricks one eye out then parvati becomes very compassionate that no no he is only having a desire he have much faith to you etc etc going by the words of parvati shiva tells okay let me not kill him or make him completely blind he shall have one eye and live in kala so the wrath of shiva basically you know the punishment of shiva is there with kuber and this north direction is also ruled by mercury along with kuber and it is shiva the curse of shiva which turns mercury into a yuno otherwise mercury was a male that his name was ila mercury was ila converts into buddha buddha basically should mean dumb but by the blessings of shiva itself it is non dumb then it is ishan dekho all these ditties that i am telling you once again i should repeat the point one rashi is divided into 10 parts for the d10 every part is ruled by a lord either in the in odd rashi in a different order in even rashi in a different order this is what parashar tells right this is told by parashar then about these ditties there are elaborate discussions in vedas and puranas that i have spent years to read to such a great extent that i teach a nakshatra course of around i am teaching a nakshatra course of around 110 120 hours dealing about all the stories in 120 hours you should understand is quite a stuff right so the interpretation of how these ditties work is based on vedas and puranas rajat and any other person that i don't know about in this busy schedule of mine i rarely have time to read books secondarily astrological books i generally don't read to be very honest with you coming to the lord of north east is ishan ishan is more like a form of shiva ishan is connected to knowledge and the sunrise of knowledge and everything related to knowledge is what is indicated by ishan or what is indicated by north east direction ishan form of shiva it is related to knowledge and everything else knowledge the uses of knowledge teaching training and all these things are indicated by ishan then lastly and other things related to shiva in spirituality discourses writing books producing research papers every anything related to knowledge goes into the ishan department now there are two more directions anand upward direction and padmaj downward direction 
Anant, the upward direction is ruled by Brahma. Upward direction is ruled by Brahma and it indicates invention, making new things along with reading, writing, teaching. Right? This is what Brahma does. Brahma being the lord of speech, Vak. Things related to teaching, speaking, oratory. And Brahma being the creator of the world, new creations, you know, patent, researches, manufacturing, etc. is indicated by Ishan. Sorry, is indicated by Anand. The last direction is Padmaj. That is the downward direction. That is, Padmaj is basically the, should, should be told as the foot of Vishnu. And a Vishnu have a foot like, feet like lotus. So Padmaj is Vishnu's foot. And things related to sustenance, Padmaj is a lot of opulence. Right? Because it is ruled by Vishnu. Taking responsibilities towards the society, taking responsibilities for the betterment of society. Studies such as sociology and working in, you know, working in NGOs or working for the betterment of people, identifying the issues and making solutions to tackle those issues is what is indicated by this Padumaj, the downward direction. Okay. This is about all these gods. What I will do is we have to go more deeper into it. 